Good morning, celebration. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. What an awesome and mighty God we serve. Amen. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. He's moving on the face of this earth. He's moving within his people. We thank the Lord for who he is, what he's doing. We welcome each and every yeah, one of you this yeah. morning. Sure Hallelujah. We'll give you a few moments to sign in. Hey, Kira. Hey, Kira. Good, morning, Good to see sweetheart. you this morning. Amen. Hey, hey Crystal. Crystal. You and Tony. Tony Bubba, so Good, Good to, to see you all. God bless you. Uh, what an awesome day this is. Amen. Got a little cold this morning. A little dew on the pumpkin at 35 degrees. Amen. <laughs> Lenny. Sue Felt Bill, good though. Hallelujah. Kira, Joshua, so good to see y'all. Christina, Angel, we're praying for your friend. Gonna lift uh, Angel's co-worker up today. Yes. Sherry, good to see good you. Good to see you this morning. Sunil, Sunil. good to see you. Lenny, God good to you. see you. Hallelujah. Hey, Donna, Donna, so good to see you this good morning. Good morning. We hope everyone's doing well. Hallelujah. Amen. You got a good night's hey, rest. Vicky and Kenneth, good to see y'all today. Yes, it is. God so good to you. see you, Vicky Kenneth. Having a blessed day. Christina and Norm. Christina and Larry, Mary, Norm, Norm and, and Nina. Nina. So good to see y'all. Excuse me. <laughs> Alan, Laura, good hey, to Alan see y'all this morning. Allison. Allison. So good to see y'all. Good to see you. Thank you for all those beautiful scriptures you post, Allison. Those are beautiful. Happy Sunday, Brenda. God bless you. Good to see you, Happy Brenda. Happy Fall Day. Absolutely. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul Sue. And Sue. Good to see y'all this Good to see y'all this morning. Amen. Amen. It is a totally gorgeous fall gorgeous, day. Gorgeous, gorgeous fall day. I tell you Amen. what. Uh, I believe it's one of those days you just crack open the window and yes. let the Lord just uh, fill the house with the coolness of this time of yes. year. Yes. But it's so good to see each and hey, every Aaliyah, one of you this morning. Good morning hey, Aaliyah, good to see you this morning. God bless you, Deidre, Deidre and Sarai, Sarai David. David. Good to so see good to see y'all. Hey, Meg and Leah, good, good to, to see y'all. Joshua, morning. good to see you. Hey, Joshua. Hey, man. Hope you're having a blessed day. Yeah, we hope everyone's had a wonderful end of the week. And, Amen. Uh, now we're on the beginning of the new week. Hey, Lonnie, Tammy, hey, Lonnie, Jess, how y'all doing? Jessica, good to see you this good morning. Good to see y'all today. And we want to welcome everyone that's tuning in to be with us Amen. today. Amen. Just uh, hit your share button. And that's that right. Helps, helps the helps. videos to go out wherever the Lord desires to send them. Amen. 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 And uh, we're excited about what the Lord's doing. He's... Uh, opened up a lot of avenues of ministry that we're hearing from around the world, uh, ministries Amen. and other people nations. Are, are they're the, watching services. Amen. They are. And uh, watching. Watch the services and be a part of celebration. Absolutely. Hey, Barbara. <laughs> hey, Barbara. Good morning. God bless you. So good to see you. Cynthia, hey, Cynthia. Good morning. Oh, Misty, good to see you. Good morning. God bless y'all. So good to see y'all this morning. Just taking a little time to meet and greet. Alan and Karen, good, good morning, to see y'all as well. Alan and Karen, good to see y'all. Oh, so good to be with everyone this morning. Amen. And we do. We encourage y'all to hit your share buttons because uh, the ministry of the Word of the Lord is going all over the world. Amen. And uh, we just encourage y'all uh, to continue to do that. Uh, it's amazing the people that are watching post services. Good morning, Diane. Hey, good Diane, morning, good to Diana, see you this morning. Diane, God bless y'all. God bless everyone. Good to have you with us. Amen. Amen. I know uh, we're going to give a few more moments. People are signing in. We and... do want to share about the shoe boxes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we got an update from Dole yesterday. Oh, my phone just... He'll gotta wake his phone up to get the wake numbers. Wake it back up. Let but me get these numbers for you. We're continuing to give to Samaritan's Purse to the shoe boxes uh, for this Christmas. And uh, As of Sandy and Miss Jane were up there yesterday, and they're continuing to put those together. Each box is $9, and on our Easy Tithe app, which is where we're continuing to honor the Lord in our tithes and offerings and, and just giving even in these ways, uh, it's right there on that little app, and you just click on it, and it does have an area for the Samaritans. Yes, it does. Uh, Absolutely. Box, and they're $9 each, but already... They have 131 100. 
yes. as of yesterday. 131 boxes as, uh, as yes, of yesterday. Yes, that are going to be going out. So that's 100. That represents and 131 little children. We know that th and we know there's more. There's more. And so please one feel of the, free to give to those. And one of the things that was shared, Doyle shared with us yesterday as Sandy and Jane were up there working uh uh, putting the boxes together is we uh, have a need for washcloths and yes. um, soap as well. Those are two items that we can continue to put into uh, each one of the boxes. Yes. So if you have washcloths or soap and you... Was uh, it bar soap? Bar was soap. That? Bar soap yes. is what we need. Bar soap we need. So okay. um, <clears throat> if you can contact Cindy at the office or... Good morning, uh, Tammy. That Amen. would yeah. be greatly appreciated. Those, Tammy, Sherry has said that it's okay to bring, uh, the, for those who are preferring to give towards in literal materials, yes. to, to go in the shoeboxes, they can be dropped off there at Destiny. And so if that's something you would like to do, uh, just contact either Sherry or Cindy, and they have set up an area for that. Good morning, Dole and Sandy. Good God to see you all this morning. God bless. Good morning, Paula, Bud, and Deborah. So good to see you all. Iris, good to see so all of you as well. You this morning. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Norm, Norm and Walt, Walt. Good to see you all so this good morning. Good to see you all. God bless you. So good to see you all. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Celebration. We're so glad you've joined us for this service today, Sunday morning, right here in the middle of October. Right here. Right here, just moving along. This is my sweet honey, Pastor Rocky. This is my sweetie, Pastor Vanjie. And we just are so glad that welcome you've you. joined us for our service today. And we're expecting wonderful things yes, from the Yes, we Lord. are. You know, he, the Lord desires for us to come with expectation. Yes, he does expectation great expectation great expectation and my honey's going to open with a scripture today and we're going to go to him in prayer amen uh the lord gave us this scripture this morning it says my god shall supply all of your need yes. according to his riches in glory by christ jesus yeah philippians 4 19 that's out of amen. our promise box amen. this morning Thank Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up the service. Father, you, Father, we come to you and we thank you for being able to have time with you individually. Yes. But we also thank you for this corporate time that we're able to be together. Thank you, Father. Father God, uh, we thank you that we at Celebration, we can gather this day as a family and worship you. Amen. But Father, there are going to be others that are going to gather from all over the world. You, and Father, Father, we pray your blessings be upon this service. Amen. We thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your word is anointed. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that the anointing is what breaks Hallelujah. every yoke. Amen. And Lord, in this service today, we want your word, the truth of your word to be spoken. And Lord Jesus, your name to be exalted and glorified. Inhabit the praises of your people. Yes, Father. Move by the power of the Holy Ghost in this service. Yes. We call people saved. We declare people yes. baptized in the Holy yes. Ghost. Yes. We declare bodies healed, yokes lifted, burdens removed. Yes. But above everything, Lord Jesus, you're lifted up, exalted, and glorified. glorified. And we'll give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' in the mighty name. name. Of amen. Jesus. amen. And amen. Hallelujah.
feel it, I feel it in my bones And I just don't think I can hold it anymore The river is rising, flowing out of me And I'm coming alive, oh yes I'm coming alive I'm gonna dance, sing, move my feet Cause the river is rising, flowing out of me Gonna let the world go, take it to the street Gonna dance and sing, let out a shout of praise
stand upon your promise, watch your words as I believe in God before me. What if God before me who can be against me now? Nothing can be against me now. And if God Almighty who lives inside me who can be against me now nothing can be against me now for me
mother passed away yesterday father god and their need at this time is for your comfort god yes, and as a church body we surround them with prayers bringing them before your throne yes. the entire family jesus yes. and asking Lord, for your loving comfort for your shalom to surround them and to guard their hearts at this time in the yes. precious holy name of Jesus. Yes. Father God, uh, Angel uh, mm -hmm. and Christina lifted up a prayer yes. request for <clears throat> one of Angel's co-workers who has a brain bleed, Lord God, yes. going on Father, and is in the hospital right at this time and is in a critical us. situation. The and these Jesus. hours right now are very critical for Should her health. Die. And Jesus, and we're asking you God. to turn things around yes. for her. Turn yes, things Jesus. around, Lord God. Things that have looked desperate, Lord God. Lord. We ask that you would pour your the healing power upon her and your hope, Lord God, on, on her Jesus. and her family, Jesus. And we're asking you for a miracle yes. as we sing, Father God, of these beautiful yes, miracles that we know Lord, that you do. As we continue to lift up Debbie, yes. we thank you for a restorative yes, a miracle Lord. that you're doing in her yes. life, Lord God. Yes. You have already done so much, and we continue to give you thanks as we lift her up as a church body before you. We thank you, God, for your continued healing power flowing in Tony, that his shoulder is continuing to be completely healed, and there's no pain anywhere in his body. For our sweet little Ellie, as she is continuing to be healed in her arm, I thank you, Father God, that she she, you just Jesus. knit that back together back completely together. in the name of and Jesus, better than it ever was, Lord yes. God, for a complete miracle, Jesus. We yes, thank Lord. you for doing that. We for sweet you. Ma Peggy, yes, we, we thank you, Father God, up. that you are we continuing, you Lord healing, God, to heal her, to her in body. every way from the top of yes. her head to the soles, to the soles of her feet, of her Lord feet. God. We thank we you for the, the way you have brought her through, other. Lord God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. She is now on the other side. Yes. And we give you glory and, you honor, glory for and honor for that. We Lord praise Jesus. you, Father God, and give you thanks for what you've done. Yes. And we just continue to speak healing yes. to that hip area, yes. Lord God, In that, the name that of got Jesus. cracked. And thank you, Jesus, that that Wholeness. is completely knit back Shalom. together completely made whole. Jesus. No pain can yes. be in her body. That's and right. for any this morning who are experiencing pain, we come against that pain in the name of Jesus. And say, oh, pain, you must be gone. <laughs> be gone. Inflammation, yes. you've got to be gone from yes. bodies in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for doing Amen. it, God. Yes, Lord. We thank you for doing yes. it. We there's thank someone, you, Lord God. There's someone out there that a right ear has uh, just all of a sudden started being closed. Mm. And right now the Lord is bringing healing. Thank you, God. Inflammation be gone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Discomfort, pain be gone. We declare no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. And every tongue that tries to rise up in judgment against you, it is condemned. Amen. You are the heritage of the Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth makes you whole. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 This beautiful God we are singing about this morning, the way maker, the one that did all the miracles we read yes. of in the word. He is still mm -hmm. in the healing business today. Yes, he and is. the miracle working business still today. Still doing miracles. Whatever it is that we have need That's of. That's right, absolutely, he is, sweetie. He is so able and so ready to do. Good Amen. morning, Kim. Good morning, Pearl. So good to see y'all. Good to see y'all this morning. Today. Welcome. And just welcome. 
to this time together as we break the word of the Lord. And I just want to open this morning with several scriptures in an exhortation entitled, Take Bold Steps in the Spirit. Amen. Take Bold Steps in the Spirit. Yes, amen. We've been talking about walking in the boldness of the Holy Ghost the last couple of Wednesday nights. And the Lord just laid on my heart to stay right in that vein. And we've been talking about how as Pentecostals, we should be praying in the Spirit more than ever. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but that challenge has been accepted by me. me and I well. have found myself over these last days just praying in the Spirit, waking up. Remember I said that the Holy Spirit was going to actually be waking you up. Amen. And when he did, don't search around wondering why did he wake me up. It was specifically to start praying in the Spirit. And I hope you're doing that. That's what we've been doing. Yes, absolutely. And just yeah. been going deeper in that because the Lord wants to pray His perfect will through us. Mm -hmm. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, that is exactly what happens. He infuses yes, us with strength, with power, and with boldness. And that boldness that He gives is to be able to take the steps that need to be taken. Yes. And He will literally help you to put one foot in front of the other. That's what the steps are. Whenever you just put, sometimes you feel like that's all you can do. Just put one step in front of the other. The Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. giving you the power to do that. Yes, He is. And that is significant. Amen. And sometimes we over-process the speed at right. which those steps are being taken. We think it's got to be in a constant run or jog. This is an endurance race we're it is. in. It is. it is not a speed race we're in. So sometimes you need to calm your mind down and say, Hey, I need to trust the Lord that I just continue to make those forward steps. Amen. Taking those bold steps in the Lord. Amen. So, fathers, we come to you with this exhortation today and just desiring to be those that continue to be infused by the power of your Holy Ghost and continue to be led to take bold steps yes. in the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you just pour out a massive anointing upon yes. your people here at Celebration. <coughs> yes. God, I'm asking you for a double portion of the Holy Ghost to be poured out upon them, Lord God. And may it be in a, such a tangible way that yes. even this week, they start bringing reports of yes, ways Lord. that they know, that they know, that they know that the Lord God, that the Holy Spirit has been leading and guiding them and opening ways and doing things mm -hmm. right in their midst and using them for your glory and your honor. Yes. Because that's why we're here, God. Yes, amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' so, name. This boldness that I'm talking about this morning, it's not a self-manufactured boldness. Rather, it's given completely by the Spirit of God. Amen. And we're a people who desire to walk by the Spirit and not by flesh. Can I see some hands? Come on. Uh, I, you just send, a, send an emoji with a hand, and that's a hand right there. That'll Come say on. that, yes, Pastor Vanji, we're a people who desire to walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. I don't see a single hand, and I know I'm in a church. Omar, good to see you. Good to see you, Omar. I know that I'm in a church of those who love to walk by the Spirit Amen. and not by the flesh. And so even when we pray, we need to recognize the importance of praying in the Spirit. Pray, hallelujah, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> I know these people, y'all are precious. These people, y'all are the ones who love to pray in the Spirit. And God's just challenging all of us to pray in tongues, yes. to pray in the Holy yes. Ghost. It's a powerful arsenal weapon that we have to be used for His glory. Because when we do that as His mm -hmm. righteous remnant... We are lifting up prayers that are in perfect agreement yes. with His will. Amen. We don't have to guess and him haul around and say, Oh, I, I hope I'm praying the right way. Come on. Uh, you're praying the right way. Come because on. the deep, the Spirit that searches the deep things mm -hmm. knows exactly the exactly prayers that need to, to be pray. going yes. up right now. Yes. And that's we need to challenge all of ourselves and say, Yes, Sandra, good to see you this morning. That we are going to be those go people deeper. who pray in the yep. Spirit. And go deeper in that. Yes. And this is where we need to take it to the next step. The Lord wants to reveal what we're praying in the Spirit. Amen. He wants to show you what you're praying about. You can go into a time of praying in the Spirit and not know. As you enter into that time, you may not know what you're praying about. That's but right. we need to ask the Lord 
to give his wisdom give concerning insight, what he's praying about. Revelation knowledge mm -hmm. to come. The Lord says that he wants to show us great and mighty things that, that we, we know mean. not. But we've got to ask. And I want to open with these scriptures this morning as I'm talking about taking bold steps in the spirit. And if you'll turn in your Bibles to Matthew 7, chap, uh, chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. This is what it says. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye at the straight gate. Come on. The straight Enter gate. Enter ye at the straight gate. For the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go thereat. Because... Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. We're talking about taking bold steps. Come on. And I want to tell you what. The boldest steps are taken when they're going against the grain. That's right. When it's steps of righteousness. <clears throat> Yeah. When you are taking steps, you're not necessarily going along with the whole crowd where that's just Come easy on. to go in that way and just get in and be yeah. right a part of a huge crowd going in. But the Lord's very clear about His gate is straight. Yes. And the way is narrow. And that takes a spirit-led mm -hmm. intuition yeah. of learning from Him to say, Father, which way do you want me to walk? He will always take you in the yes. way that is the right way, mm -hmm. the path of righteousness. Yes. And it may not be the popular opinion of the day, but that's not what we're led by. The road less we traveled. We go the road less traveled. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But that's where we go. And then in Psalm 37, verse 23, the word says, The steps Come on. of a righteous man or woman are ordered of the Lord. Yes. And he delighteth in his way. Ooh, our hallelujah. steps, where our feet go, mm -hmm. matters to God. Amen. He actually, if we'll listen to him, he wants to order the literal steps that we take. And this got me, that he delights in the steps that you and I take. And I said, wow, God, you delight in those and it was like, absolutely, I absolutely delight in him. And immediately he likened it to, to as parents, when we have our little children, our little toddlers, and we're teaching them to That's walk. That's right. We'll get on one side and the other parent on the other side. We get those arms wide open oh, yeah. and we call to them and we might have their favorite <coughs> little toy waiting on them. But we delight. Yes. There's a delight. You should watch parents when they're getting <coughs> their little one to learn how to walk and those first steps are taken. We are created to walk. Come We're to created to walk in the physical. Yes. We're created to walk in the spiritual. Yes. And as much as our hearts delight when we see our little toddlers taken yes. off and starting to walk, starting to do that which is supposed to be done, the Lord Jesus, God Almighty, delights Come in on. the steps that we take, the You're righteous right. steps that we take. Amen. They delight Him. Amen. Amen. And then in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 through 27, His Word says, let your eyes look straight ahead. To get through that straight gate, you can't mm -hmm. have eyes doing this. No, you got to have The blinders. eyes have to be looking straight ahead. Come on. Straight. Set, fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought. That's right. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all of your Amen. ways. Do not turn to the left or Come to on. the right. Keep your foot from evil. <clears throat> We've got to stay Focus. focused. We've That's got right. to hear from God the steps that we're to take. Amen. And I heard a story recently. It was a fictional story, but it uh, totally captured what is being said in these verses. It was a story of a king who put out a challenge to three princes. And he was telling them they were from neighboring lands and there would, they would be covering long journey to get to him, and there would be varying landscapes, but he offered this challenge to them. Out of these three princes, he said, the one of you that can get to my castle in a straight line, I'm going to give you the privilege to ask for my daughter's hand in marriage. Well, the challenge was met. 
And the first prince, he went out, but here's what he did. He kept looking to the left and the right. He wanted to make sure that he wasn't veering off in right. any direction. Well, guess what? He was unable to keep that straight path, and mm -hmm. he was disqualified. Then the next guy, the next prince came along. He's like, okay, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. If I will look down and just look at my feet, and I'll just keep putting one foot in front of the other, and I follow uh -huh. my feet, then I'm going to make it straight. But again, he veered off. By looking down, he veered off, and mm -hmm. he was disqualified. But then came the third prince, and he took the challenge. He didn't do either of those things. He didn't look to the left. He didn't look to the right. He didn't look down at his feet. But at the end of his journey, there he was at the castle. And when they looked, they determined that he had come on a straight line, in a straight path, and everyone was absolutely amazed. And they wondered, how on earth, how on earth did you do this? He said, well, let me tell you. All I did was look into the far distance to the light on the crown of the castle tower. Mm -hmm. I didn't look at my path. I didn't check out where my feet were going. I didn't look around me. I kept my eyes on that light and I just kept walking and I kept pressing forward till I arrived there. Amen. That's the way. The words of this prince contain very valuable spiritual wisdom for mm -hmm. us as believers as we're talking about taking bold steps yes. in the spirit. Amen. We have got to recognize that we've got to keep that focus. Yes, Gotta we're living focused. in a world where there's lots of change happening every day. Our lives are filled with change. The one thing that does not change is the, is Lord. the Lord. And in Malachi 3, 6, as we talked about on Wednesday night, he says, I, the Lord, do not change. Don't change. Therefore, you no. sons of Jacob are not consumed. consumed. He is that light. He is that steady place that we are able to keep our gaze fixed on so that we are able to take those bold steps and continue moving Amen. straight forward to him. <clears throat> That is what he desires Amen. from us. But we have to fix that eternal gaze upon him. Amen? Amen. We have to keep have going to. there. Because there are many valleys that we go down, and there are a lot of mountain su uh, summits that we come to the top of. Mm -hmm. That's not what this journey is about. No. It's that we've kept our eyes, kept our eyes on, the, on Lord, the Lord, and we've kept moving forward. Amen. He wants us to get straight to him and to remain steadfast. Yes. And all the more... In the day that we're living right now. Amen. I'm talking Amen. about taking bold steps in the spirit <clears throat> today. And the Lord has asked me to glean from one of the most unlikely men in the Bible. As far as looking at a source for encouragement for boldness and bold steps. You know, I would have thought that the Lord would have led me to uh, look at Joshua and Caleb. To look at David. Right. I mean, these men, they're just known for their boldness mm -hmm. and courage. <clears throat> and courage, but that's not where he took me. He led me to someone who's actually not described in that way at all. In fact, he certainly would be labeled as uh, more timid and fearful. More timid and fearful. Timid and fearful. But still, there was something beautiful in his life. In spite of not naturally being bold and courageous, he was able to make bold steps, even though they were tentative at first. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not a speed walk. No. It's not a it's not a race of how fast you get there. It is that that endurance and persist, persistence continues, taking one step after another. And this man was powerfully used by the Lord to relieve Israel from tremendous suffering. And I actually highlighted the suffering that he relieved them from uh, probably a month or two ago in a message that I shared out of Joel about yeah. how he, uh, their crops, the Israelites were planting their crops year after year, and the enemy army would descend right at harvest right. time, right when you've done all the work, and steal and rob them of all of their crops. Well, the man in this story is who was part of all of that. He had seen that happening. He had heard the stories of it happening. It bothered him so right. bad. And the Israelites, they felt so helpless as they were surrounded by the enemy armies. Over 135 strong that would just swoop in on them and steal everything that they had planted. And it just made them feel like grasshoppers. And this mighty man that I'm talking about today, he had heard from his parents, he had heard from teachers about 
great things that God had done for Israel. He had heard of the massive deliverances. He had heard of the way that the Lord had done such wonderful things. But he had not seen it in his lifetime. And he had become very discouraged. And he's the type of person that wondered if God even really cared about him or cared about his people. He's the kind of person that was filled with discouragement. And the individual that I'm talking about today, many of you know him, it's Gideon. And upon meeting him, he would definitely come across as the least likely individual That's to right. make bold steps in the spirit. But here he is. He's the one who represents people who feel abandoned. They feel hopeless. They feel helpless until the word of the Lord brings transformation in their lives and enables them to make bold steps. And Gideon, you might say, was specifically chosen for the qualities that he didn't have in the natural because they were imparted to him supernaturally Supernatural. and by the Spirit of God. And he did take steps when that happened to him. And we're talking about these bold steps. Like I said, Gideon lacked in the natural and was thoroughly discouraged. He was had no self-confidence and he just was the very one that the Lord yeah, picked. That he chose. The Lord wanted to give him something to turn that around. Right. He saw something in Gideon because Gideon actually cared about what was happening mm. to his people. Yes. Even though he felt helpless, he cared about them. He was concerned. He wanted to see that change. Amen. And as we'll go to uh, the first thing that the Lord wants to give and that he gave to Gideon and taking bold steps is confidence but church it's not self-confidence no. that the Lord desires to give no. No. and that's not what he gave to Gideon God gave Gideon God confidence, God confidence. yes God confidence God confidence supersedes self-confidence any day of the week. That's right. God confidence will take you further, will help you to step out and do more things for the Lord than any self-confidence. Self-confidence, you can step out and take one step, two steps, then things get shaky and you retreat. But if you are standing in God confidence, you are able to... To continue, and if he tells you to stop at a point, you stop. But you take the next step in the God confidence that he gets. Amen. And let's turn to Judges chapter 6, verse 12 this morning to see how this came. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And some versions say, mighty man of valor. And most of the time when we read this verse, all we focus on is, wow, here's this timid guy and God just called, called him a mighty, mighty man, man of, of valor. valor. But that's not what we need to be no. looking at. Those are not the words to look at. But it was the first part in taking bold steps in the spirit. And it came by receiving God confidence. But the way that that was activated in his life wasn't by God calling him a mighty no. man of valor. It was by the words preceding that. Mm -hmm. The Lord is with you, Gideon. The Lord, Lord is, is with, with you. you. The Lord is with you, celebration. Yes. Those are the words that contain the power to instill God confidence Amen. in Amen. anybody. They instilled it in Gideon. They are there to instill it in any of us right. that need to be infused with God confidence. Yes. Amen. It's a supernatural confidence that's activated when we know that we know that we know God is with us. Come on. Does anybody know what I'm talking Come about on. this morning? When the Lord, when you know you are able to move forward because you feel his presence. Come on. We, you know that he is there with you. Amen. And those are the words that brought transformation in Gideon's yes, life. Yes, it is. Those are the very words that began that transformation pro process and enabled him to start making those first, yes. those tentative he was able to start making some bold steps in Amen. the Lord. And it's the message that the Lord wants us to know today. He's saying, celebration, I want you to know this one thing. I am with I'm you. I am with you. 
I am with you even in the midst of the turbulent times yes. that you're living in, even in the t turbulent times your nation is going through, even through the turbulent times this world is going through, when things are shaking on every side, That's right. I want you to rest in knowing I, I am, am with, with you. you. I am with you. I want to instill a greater God confidence in is what he's saying, in my people. Uh -huh. I put it inside of Gideon, and I desire to do it in my remnant believers that will cause you to be able to take bold steps in him knowing, knowing that he is with you. And it's the yes. first step to being able to walk in that yes, boldness. Yes, it is. And that God confidence, where does it come from? It comes as we get in his word. In the word. It comes through his spoken word. Yes. It comes when we encourage one another through his word. And he wants us to take time also to recite the victories that he's given us in our life. Sometimes you need to stop. If, if it just feels like everything's coming against you, get out a notebook and say, Okay, God, I want to take, a take some time right now, and I want to write of the victories. I want to look back in the years behind me, yes. and I want to start writing down what you have done, the victories Amen. I know you brought me through. Amen. That will also help yes. build you back up in that God confidence. It's that thing King David did whenever he encouraged, encouraged himself, himself in, in the, the Lord. Lord. He was able to look back, even though he was in the midst of despairing times. Mm -hmm. He looked back, and he's like, oh, but God, oh, I remember yes. when... Uh, you helped me kill that lion. Yes. Oh, but God, I remember you when you helped me kill the bear. And oh God, I I know the time you helped me to kill, kill Goliath. Goliath. You go back, and Come all on. of us have those times that we're able to refer to. Amen? Yes. Amen. This brings us to the second point of what God will do to encourage us to take bold steps in the Spirit. He will challenge us. The Lord will challenge us. Malachi 3.10 is one of the first ones we think of. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be full food in my house and thereby, thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour for you a blessing until there's no more need. God is actually laying a challenge out there in this verse just concerning giving. Yes. But throughout our lives, God will lay, lay challenges before us. And they're challenges for our good. Yes. Things that stretch us. Things that make us go beyond what we feel right. we're able to do in the natural. And they're for our good. Just as I was talking earlier about when we get our toddler to start walking. Mm -hmm. When we get there and we get on either side and we've got our arms open and we're calling to them. That's a challenge. We're challenging them Challenge to do what we them. know yeah. they can do. Yes. They may not know it now, but we know it. And so it's that challenge. He and challenges, challenges us. the Lord does that. He will give challenges to you to step out and for you to know that he's there with you and yes. to assure you that you are taking those steps that need to be taken. And God sees the steps that he has for all of us to take. And he assuringly challenges us to step forward and trust him. And God put that challenge in front of Gideon. First of all, God wanted Gideon to believe him with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. He wanted him to get rid of unbelief. He had heard and seen so many things that had caused him and filled him with doubt, and the Lord wanted to drive that out of his life. The second thing that the Lord wanted to do in Gideon is he set a challenge before him to tear down all those idols of Baal. Ooh. He said, I want you to get rid of all of them. I want you to tear them down. I want you to get rid of sin. Yes. He was putting a challenge before Gideon saying, I want to rise you up raise you up as a righteous judge. But in order to do that, you're going to have to do some difficult things. You're going to have to be part of the tearing down team, getting rid of any idols, these idols of Baal. And you know the awesome thing in that? He wasn't telling him to tear down his idols. Oh, no. He said, tear down your father's your idols. Your father's idols. The idols that were set up there. Come so on. it was quite the challenge. But he was raising him up as a That's righteous right. judge. So he had to start right there in That's his own right. house. In his own then thirdly, household. he wanted Gideon, the, the challenge he was putting before Gideon was, I want you to trust me completely. And I want you to get rid of any extra weight that that's holding you mm -hmm. back. And we see that yes. come into play in, a little later in the story as he had to start whittling down his great big yeah, army. army. This brings us to the third point of what God will give you to help you, to help me, 
make bold steps in the spirit. And it's one of the things that we remember most in this story about Gideon. It's all those fleeces. Do you remember yes. Gideon was the one who laid out all he those did. fleeces before the Lord? And, and Lord, now if you're really speaking to me, do this. Lord, With this fleece. if you're doing, oh, do this. With this he fleece. did it three different times. And do you know what? The Lord honored him he every did. time. And the third thing that the Lord wants to bring is confirmation. So the first thing to make these bold steps is you've got to have confidence, but not just any kind of confidence. You've got to have God confidence. The second thing, you've got to ha take the challenges that God puts before you and step out in them. If he challenges you, if the Lord challenges you to do something, step out. He, he says, test him. Test him and see. Yes. He wants to prove himself. Amen. He wants to prove his word. Over in Psalms, it talks about how he proves his word. Yes. He will prove it to you, whatever <clears throat> area of life it is. And then the third thing is the Lord does want to give confirmation. Gideon mm -hmm. was not the only one in the world who liked to have some <clears throat> confirmations from the Lord. Not After at all. all, the things that Gideon was having to be tested in meant life or death. Yes. What he was being asked to do and the armies he was yeah. being asked to go against, it, was it meant, hey, if I do this, I'm either going to survive or I'm going to die. That's right. There's only two choices. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know that he knew that he knew that he knew that he had heard from the Lord. That's right. And the Lord gave those confirmations, and he's giving them today. Yes, He amen. wants us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're hearing from the Lord. And in Judges chapter 16, verse chapter 6 rather verse 16 and mm -hmm. 17 he says and the Lord said unto him surely I will be with thee and he said unto him if now I have found grace in thy sight then show me a sign that thou talkest to me and this sign is what we commonly refer to as that confirmation, confirmation. word. That confirmation word yes. from God. And the Lord's very compassionate to us this morning, church. He knows the situations. He knows the pressures of life that pull us down. He knows the value of a word of confirmation from Amen. Him yes, to us. And the Bible is full of men who desired and actually experienced great pressures yes. and needed those words of confirmation. I mean, Abraham, he was wondering if he was ever going to have a son. That's there right. he was in his old age. Is it ever going <laughs> to happen? Moses, he's wandering out there with all those people, and he's wondering, how on earth am I going to do this, God? Right. He needed some confirmation. He needed some help from the Lord. Joshua, when Moses left, he's like, how am I going to make it? How am I going to do it? In each case, God gave them specific words of yes. confirmation that allowed them to walk in that God confidence, Amen. that allowed them to accept the challenges that were before them and to continue walking with his confirmation, Come on. taking those bold steps, bold, Take them bold steps, steps. In, yes. in the Holy Ghost Amen. that needed to be taken. God wants to confirm to your hearts today that he will give you assurance that he is speaking to you. He will give you what you need. Yes. And he told Gideon, Go in this thy might, that thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Come on. Have I not sent thee? He let Come him know, on. Oh, absolutely. You keep going forward. You keep marching on. I am the one that has sent you. You go forward in me. You take these steps in me. Yes. And that's exactly what he did. He knew that he had chosen the right man for the victory job. Yes, he had. God wants to give victories. He wants us to look at past victories, but the Lord's saying, I have victories that lay ahead of you, but take those bold steps to get to them. Amen. And we, he gave specific directions which were obeyed, and it involved bringing the whole Israeli army together, which numbered in the thousands and mm -hmm. thousands. And here's where he told him to get rid of some of that weight. Brought them down to 300 men. Yes. Here he starts out with this massive amount of men, thousands and thousands. And then he tells them to get rid of them and keeps whittling it down until he only has 300. God was proving himself to Gideon. The things that God tells you, they may sound outlandish. Mm-hmm. Did that not? That had to sound outrageous to this timid guy. Yes. What, Lord? Am I am I truly hearing from am you? Am I really? 
I have all these men and you keep wanting me to whittle it down to just this number. Yeah. And he said yes, because the Lord had great victory. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to give it to him. And the Lord wants to give great victories yes. to us today. But it comes by walking in that God confidence that's found in Proverbs 3, 6, which says, For the Lord shall be thy confidence, Come and on. he shall keep thy foot from Come being on. taken. The Lord wants us to walk in his confidence. <laughs> He wants to order our steps today. Amen? Amen. And so it's that God confidence of knowing that he's with you and he's leading you every step of the way. And he also wants to challenge us to take those bold steps that we yes. never imagined taking before. He might be leading you to do something. You're just like, I just don't know that I can do it. He's saying, you can do it in me. Yes. You can do it in me. And we're part of this together. And it's a valuable part of walking in the spirit and taking those bold steps as God gives you confirmation that you need. And so as we close tonight, God wants to lift. He wants to lift the weight off of somebody. You know, in Gideon's story, he had a weight of having to get rid of a lot of soldiers that were not the ones that the Lord had desired to go in for this particular victory. Yeah, they were victory. warriors. They were warriors, but they were not the ones yeah, he had for this for particular it. victory. And there can be weights that hold you back. Things that the Lord's saying, I need you to get rid of that. Get that mm -hmm. out of your life. It's holding you back. It's become a weight in your life. Yes. Get rid of you. Get rid of it. And it's what is spoken of in Hebrews 12, verse 1. It's become an enemy. And the Lord wants that off of you. And sometimes it might be a sin that so easily besets you. Yeah. Come on. It entangles you. Yeah. And that's what is spoken of in Hebrews 1. It's become like a chokehold on you. It's been a grip on you. And the Lord says, get rid get of rid that of sin. He told uh, Gideon to get rid of those idols. There may be something in your life that you're like, you, you recognize. This has just become an idol to me. Then yeah. the Lord said, get rid of it. Get right. rid of it. Tear, Tear it down. that way. Tear it down. Because I've got things for you. And that sin... That idol's not coming along for this My journey. Goodness. It's not a part of this wow. victory. You've got to keep taking those steps boldly that I'm giving you to take. But that stuff's got to go. It's hindering you. And Come then on. it's decision time about that. God has victories for you, but there's sin that's not going to those victories. So do you want the victory? Come on. Get rid of the sin. Get you rid of to. the thing Absolutely. that is entangling you. And I want to pray for you tonight. <laughs> There's some who just desire for that greater boldness. They want yes. that God confidence. They're like, I see how I've allowed, <laughs> I've been trying to depend on self-confidence to get me through. Right. And I'm coming up short. You will always come up short if you're trying to depend mm -hmm. on self-confidence. Or if you're going to be led with that, it's going to go flat. Come on. It will not produce. You're right. Self-confidence Self -confidence will not produce, will produce the things of God, yes. the things of His Spirit yes. in your life. But putting your trust in Him and allowing Him to infuse you with right. His confidence, that will turn things around. You may be the one who's like, I want to accept those challenges that God is putting before me. I want that to happen more in my life. I want to step out. I want to Come take on. those bold steps. The Lord is going to infuse you with what you need yes. today. And those who just want that word of confirmation from the Lord, He wants to give that to you. So as I pray for you this morning, I first would like to pray for the one that has never accepted the Lord. You are needing that 12, uh, Hebrews 12.1 12, experience. Where Amen. that thing, that, that sin, <coughs> that so easily has entangled you and it's choking you. Yes. That's the way he keeps showing me. It is literally it's choking. choking the life out yes. of you. God wants to remove that python spirit off your That's neck right. today in the name of yes, Jesus. In the name and of so, Jesus. Father, for that one, that, that, that choking spirit, yes. that enemy spirit has yes. come and try to <clears throat> literally choke the life out of one of your children, we come against it yes. in the name of Jesus name and of say Jesus. your power is rendered null That's and void. That's right, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For that one 
who needs to get rid of sin or any idol, anything, any Come anything, on. whether it be Come something on. small, something big. You see that it's something that has crept in and you're like, that's it. That's it. That's it. It's going today. Yes. Then pray this with us this morning. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. I am giving you this sin. I'm giving you this sin. I'm, I want this idol removed from my life. I want this idol removed from my life. I desire to walk in you. My desire to walk in you. I want to be forgiven of all sin. I want to be forgiven of all sin. I give my heart to you. I give my heart to I you. I thank you that your son Jesus died on the cross for I me. I thank you that your son Jesus died on the cross for me. He was buried in the grave. He was buried in the grave. And rose on the third day. And rose on the third and day. And I ask him. And I ask him. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord. Come into my heart. I Lord. give my life to you. I give my life to I you. I give my life to you. And right now I'm praying for your deliverance in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. Whatever that bondage is that has just had you in a chokehold, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that thing is lifted off yes. of them in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, for your children mm. who are desiring, yes. who who come in a timidity, who may come, come maybe maybe right now they just feel like I'm not a courageous person. Come on. I I, I don't have. I, I have more fear than I have faith. Come on. Father God, infuse them yes. with your God confidence. Yes, your God infuse confidence. Infuse them, Lord God, with the power of your spirit. Yes, with the power of your spirit, Lord. To take great steps of boldness in you, Lord yes. God. To do the things you're calling them to do. Help them to take one step. One step. After the next step. After the next step. Yes. Give those words of confirmation, Father yes, God. Lord. May we hear testimonies of how you have ministered to your children. Confirming to their hearts things you're speaking to them in the yes. name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the precious name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Ooh, you, Lord. What a powerful word from the Lord, sweetie. Jesus. I tell you, the the Lord, <laughs> he, you're gonna you're gonna sit back and y'all gonna be amazed. The Lord confirms His word. Yes. He does. He confirms His word. Yes. I want you to listen to me for a moment. Well, listen to me until I finish. But I want you to hear this. Yesterday morning, the Lord woke me up at four o'clock, and He spoke two scriptures to me. And in those two scriptures, uh, he just gave me the name of the book and gave me the chapter. Yes. And I was like, okay, Lord, <clears throat> I went back to sleep. And that never happens to anybody else. And I went back to sleep. Well, all of a sudden, I woke up again about an hour and ten minutes later. The Lord said, I told you to go to the Hosea 10. Go to Hosea 10. And then he spoke to me, and he had told me once again to go to this other scripture that the Lord gave me. And it was Zechariah, chapter number 8. Let me give you this, sweetie. Amen. And in this, I want you to look at something before we uh, dive into those scriptures. Amen. Uh, mm. Set this up yes. there. Yes, yes. <clears throat> the, the Lord's Israel, Israel has gone into captivity twice. Israel has been removed from, from the land of, uh, of Israel twice. The Lord has done this. In Hosea chapter number 10, we won't dive into everything concerning it, <clears throat> but we know according to the word of God that he says that what has been will be again, and what has been spoken at will be spoken again. What has been done will be done again. And the Lord is speaking and he's showing us things because, yes, under the blood of Jesus, we have a new and a better covenant through his precious blood. But the Lord is also, he's speaking to us in the day that we're living in. And you look back and, and we can look over these past seven months of what we've walked through. We cannot walk through what has happened in the seven months, the way the world's walked through it. No. Okay? No. Does it affect our lives? Yes, it affects our lives. But what we've walked through is, God, what are you showing us? Yeah. What is it that you're speaking to us as we're walking through these things? And God has, has shown some great and mighty things to, to each one of us when we choose to hear. My wife was just speaking 
Why did Israel, the northern kingdom, why did Israel get taken into captivity? Israel got taken into captivity into Babylon because they had other gods before God. And we look and we go, well, you know, I don't have an Asher pole in my house. I don't have, I don't worship Molech. Uh, well, in chapter 10 of Hosea, the Lord goes through speaking to Israel and telling them the gods that he was telling them to tear down. And when you start looking through those gods, guess what? You start seeing the very gods of today that, we're, that we have in front of us. Amen. And there was captivity that came to Israel and they were taken into the Babylonian captivity. And we know that that particular time of captivity, that it began right around 597, uh, that they were led into captivity. And when they went into captivity, that God would bring them out but we know they were there for 70 years. So uh, 597, somewhere to 527, they were going to come out of captivity. We know that in 539, that Cyrus, king of Persia, that he defeated Babylon. And when he defeated Babylon, another four years took place. And he started realizing that God wanted to do something. Uh, there's many times in the scriptures the correlation is given of God using Cyrus. And uh, we're living in a day and an age where God uses Cyruses mm -hmm. uh, to do things. And this day in which we're living in today, God is wanting to bring a restoration back to people's lives. Amen. God is wanting to bring a restoring back to people's lives. As my wife so eloquently shared, one of the things that Gideon had to do. Now, remember, Gideon hid from the Midianites. Oh, yes. Gideon was hiding. That's where the Lord found yes. him. The Lord found him, and we must understand that he was threshing at the wine press. Yes. He was threshing wheat, yes. and what he was threshing was literally the... the uh, wheat seeds that were left on the ground because the Midianites would come in oh, yeah. yearly yeah. and they would trample the crops and it was called the locust and they would come in and they would literally wipe out the harvest yes. of Israel and we would see in the scriptures that they were sifting this out of the dust, oh, yes. and he would take it into the wine press. Didn't even go to the threshing floor. Oh no, because it was out in the open. Yes, and, and he knew they would just come at, once he got it all done and steal that. Right. So he would do it late at night. Late at night. Late at night, and right where you said. And when he was doing this, it was it was late at night. Yeah. So he was afraid. Absolutely. He had a fear that had Absolutely. a hold of him. And understand. Fear, we can allow fear to be a God. Mm, mm, Come on. Mm, amen, we can allow amen, fear amen. to take control because mm. we understand that God has not given us a spirit, a spirit of fear, fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Amen. So fear can be a God that tries to elevate itself above God Almighty. We know that Israel, Israel moved in, in this spirit that was behind it where they were felt superior. They felt that others had been treated more properly in the distribution of lands. And thus, they became angry and wanted, they were covetous of others. They did not recognize Jerusalem as the capital. They did not recognize Jerusalem as where God was ascending and descending. So they wouldn't go to Jerusalem to worship. Mm -hmm. They established another place to worship God. They were in a rebellion. You were talking about the Python spirit. Yes. It is a rebellion spirit. And we know that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yes. 
So they were in this witchcraft. They were in this rebellion. And what was happening is Israel. Now this is in Hosea 10, beginning in verse number one, that Israel, they were having the life choked out of them yes. as a python yes. spirit. We are living in a day and an age where, let me tell you what, October is oh, known as the bewitching yes, month. Yes. It is the month where there is more evil activity at, than any other time in the year because the enemy has got people praying yes. to come against yes. believers. Yes. It seems that during this time, all of a sudden things happen and they seem to happen out of nowhere. And guess what? Yes. It's schemes of the enemy Absolutely. that come against us. Yes. In the month of October, the spirit of heaviness tries to come upon people. Yes, yes. <clears throat> All of a sudden, Israel is taken into captivity. And when they're taken into captivity, now we understand they had destroyed Benjamin. They had come against Benjamin and defeated Benjamin. Now, Benjamin, remember, was of a different mother than Israel's mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. So there was this disdain. That was there. He and Joseph. Benjamin was the son of Joseph. No, not, not the Or excuse brother, me, the, the brother, brother of Joseph. Those were the two. So we have to understand that these things were happening. But when they went into captivity, mm -hmm. God had told them in Hosea 10, said, here, tear down all of your altars. Tear <laughs> oh, down wow. all of your idols. Yes. Tear them down. Yes. Brothers and sisters, we are getting ready to enter in, and I'm, I'm speaking prophetically here. We're entering in, and we are already in, whether the body of Christ wants to realize it or not, but we can only rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It is in Him and Him alone. Amen. He says He's coming back for those who long to see Him. Amen. He's coming back. For those who are trusting in and relying upon him Amen. in everything. Amen. Israel all of a sudden went into captivity. Guess what? They were indentured. They were now slaves to their captors. We understand. We see Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. We see that they were in service to the king. They were serving him. And we have to understand that if we choose not to tear down the altars, the idols that can, the sin that so easily besets us, and I believe over these seven months, that's what God has been speaking to his people. He's been speaking to us, come, draw near to me. Amen. Put away all those things that have hindered you. Amen. Those things that have so easily beset you. Amen. And it seems like everyone is crying, oh, we're ready for normal. We're ready for normal. We're ready for normal. But let me tell you what, there is no new normal except walking with God Amen. in the fullness of the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. That is what should be the norm Amen. for the body of Christ. Amen. From, I don't care whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Episcopal, Amen. Catholic, Pentecostal, yeah. if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ yes. as your Savior yes. and you're washed in the blood of Jesus yes. and you're serving Him, He's telling all of us, have no other gods before me. Amen. And He will cause to return. Now, the second scripture that God gave me was out of the book of Zechariah. I hope that you're getting uh, something from this. Amen. Let's take a few moments and go into the book of Zechariah because I think that what we end up doing, uh -huh. listening, listen to me. Amen. When they were in the will, when they were in captivity, when they were in the sin of their other gods, it caused them to start longing for something. They were longing for Jerusalem again. They were longing for the place of God. They were longing. I'm not talking about a building. 
I'm not talking about the brethren. I'm talking about a longing for the presence of Almighty God. Amen, amen. I'm talking about they were longing for this place. In the book of Zechariah, a phenomenal word, and, I, and I've, I've studied through the Old Covenant so many times. I did a 110-page a paper my senior year in high school on the Old Testament prophets, and Zechariah was one of the keys of the Old Testament prophets that we focused on. But I have not seen until the Lord spoke to me yesterday morning what God showed to me out of the book of Zechariah in the light. Why? Because there are appointed times and there are appointed places yes. that God has called us to. Yes. And we are in an appointed time of God and we are in the appointed place of God, his presence. We are in the time and the place that God has so, so ordained for this period of time in history. Yes. Now, yes. look with me, if you will, out of the book of uh, Zechariah, the eighth chapter, beginning in the first verse. Now, listen, I'm going to share some things with you. Get your pen, paper out, write it down, write it down. Amen. These are life words. Amen. These are life words. These are words that will see you through when when you're going, oh my goodness, what can I do? Oh my goodness, what can I, what, what can I rely upon? <coughs> Verse number one, and the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Zion. I am jealous for Zion. That word, I am jealous, I was jealous is another way that it was put. I was jealous for Zion. That is konal, konal. And it means, the verb expresses a very strong emotion. This is from the theological word book of the Old Testament. A very strong emotion whereby some quality or possession of the object is desired by the subject. The subject is the Lord. The Lord is declaring, I was jealous for Zion. Mm -hmm. He's declaring that when they were in captivity, when they were still bound up, even though they had had to leave their gods behind, they went into a captivity that worshipped other gods. And in that, they started building a longing for Jerusalem. They started building a longing once again for the presence of God. But God is declaring, I was jealous for Zion. I was jealous. So he has that possession. He has that object of his desire. And we know the covenant that God made with Abraham, the covenant he made with Abraham, promised to Isaac, promised to Jacob. He was promising it to the people of God, as numerous as the stars, as numerous as the sand on the sea. And he was saying, you are my possession. You are the apple of my eye. You Amen. are what I keep my eye upon. Amen. We know, and I love the scripture, where Jacob, he wrestled with God. Yes. And where he wrestled is none other than in Jerusalem, yes. where he wrestled with God. Yes. Understand that Zion, 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 it is the forfeited mound, the fortified mounds between Kidron Valley and Tipperan valleys that David captured. When David captured these, these mounds, when he captured this area, David went to this place, and there was a place that was on this mountain, and this place was none other than the threshing floor. 
and David went to take possession. But when David went to take possession, he paid for the threshing floor. And everyone, see, he did something that was contrary to what everybody else would do. Everyone else said, you've won the victory, take the threshing floor. But David bought the threshing floor. And when David bought the threshing floor, he declared, I will offer to God nothing that doesn't cost me something. Yes. Yes. Serving the Lord cost him everything. Hello? Yes. It cost Jesus everything. We are in a covenant relationship. He gave everything for us. What is our end of the covenant yes. to be in relationship with him? Yes. We are to give everything for him. Yes. Give everything to him. So this mount called Zion, it was in this Kidron Valley, but yet he took it from the Jebusites. And that's in 2 Samuel 5, 7, when, if you get a moment to go read it. It became known long before Beth, it, Bethlehem, it became known as the city of David, but the building of the temple to the north, the hill became known as Mount Zion, as Mount Zion. It became known as the place of God's presence. From the times of Solomon, the temple Zion became the center of Yahweh's activity. Zion, the temple area, Jerusalem, because it is on the mountain of God. It is on Mount Zion that is the stone where Jacob saw heaven opened and saw ascending and descending the angels from Almighty God. It is that temple mount of God. And Yahweh is identified himself as the one who dwells on Mount Zion. Here he initiates his work of salvation, and here he begins his judgment of sin that you find in Amos 1 and 2. But we must understand that is a physical location. It is still the mountain of God. It is still where God identifies activity, and he is going to do something different. Yes. Now we are living in the day and the time of the Gentiles. We are living because remember, I said there were two, two separations of the Jewish people of the northern kingdom of Israel into a captivity. Remember in 70 AD that the city of Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. And the people were cast across the face of the earth. They went in to a captivity. And we must understand that until 1948, the nation of Israel did not come back to and was the door not open to come back into Jerusalem. So God, through the Gentiles, God has taken a habitation. Remember, there is no temple. The Ark of the Covenant is not there. It's still the holy city of God. But at this moment, God has chosen to take up residence inside his children. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, I have been crucified with Christ, Christ. but yet I live. But this life that I live, I live by faith yes. in the Son of God yes. who gave himself for me. Yes. This life that we are called to live is a life of faith. Hallelujah. We must understand that he has taken up residence in us. Know you not, know you not that you are the temple 
of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you are born again, all of a sudden, a living habitation of the temple of the living God has moved into us. Amen. He has taken up residence in us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, greater is he that is in us than he that is Amen. in the world. Amen. The one who lives in us created the universe. The one who lives inside of us Hallelujah. created all the stars, yes. created all the planets, yes. created the this earth created it and put life upon this earth. Yes. The God, the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yes. has taken up residence inside of you yes. and I. Yes. And he is speaking here. And he has said, I was jealous for Zion. Yes. If God was jealous for a mountain, if God was jealous for for a city, and he was desiring his people to get back to the city. Amen. Let me ask you what? How much more jealous is God of you and I? Amen. Because he now takes up residence in us, and Amen. he said, I shall have no other gods before Amen. me. Amen. He is telling us, body of Christ, all across this world, wherever this message may be heard, he's telling us it's time to separate us. It is time for us to tear down anything that would try to exalt itself Amen. against the knowledge of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> he, in his word here, going through chapter 8 of Zechariah, he speaks very plainly. And he shows us. He wants to bring blessing back to Judah. He wants to bring, I love this. Come down in verse number three and look at this. Thus says the Lord, I shall return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts and the holy mountain. If that's what he speaks of in Jerusalem where he takes up residence, what is it that he wants to be in us where he has taken up residence? He talks about the planting. He talks about the seeds. He talks about the things that have now come to pass. Now this is, understand, 2,500 years after he spoke it. That God fulfilled it. Yeah. We get tied up in days. We get tied up in weeks, months. We get tied up in these things. And God says, I'm with you. Amen. Amen. I am with you. I am with you. Amen. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake Amen. you. I'm your ever-present help Amen. in time of trouble. Yes. There is a famine in this land. It's a, not of bread. It's not of water. It is of hearing the word of God. Yeah. If, if God wants all of us, when he reassembles the body, Amen. as my wife was sharing on Wednesday night, it's a reassembling that God's doing. When God reassembles the body, he is going to bring my wife's life experience of these seven months and what he's done. My life experience of what he's done in these seven months. Your life experience Amen. of Amen. what he's done in this seven months. And every one of Amen. us should have been catapulted further beyond than where we ever began entering into this. Amen. And as we come back together, we are going to come back together and be reassembled, Amen. and it will be an assembling together unlike Celebration Family Worship Center has ever seen before because none of us will be where we have been. Amen. Now, the Lord speaks... In this, yes. as we understanding Judah was very special to God's eye because this is who Messiah came through, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he speaks and he declares what he is doing. 
But as they come back, understanding that those have, who have been away from God mm -hmm. and come back as the northern kingdoms, Israel, yes. but also the southern kingdoms, Judah, as they reassemble together, which is what we are praying. God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We pray for the shalom of Jerusalem. So here in the scriptures, in verse 14, look at this. For thus says the Lord of hosts, as I thought to bring calamity upon you, he's talking about Israel, the northern kingdom, upon you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I did not relent or revoke your sentences. So the 70 years separation, the 2,500 or 2,000 years of separation. And he begins in verse 15 and look at this. So again, I have purposed in these days to do good to Jerusalem, to the house of Judah. Fear not. Amen. Fear not. Amen. I have chosen to do good. God says, I know the plans Hallelujah. that I have for you. Hallelujah. They are plans of good and not of evil. Hallelujah. Plans to give you hope, to give you a future, to bring you to your the desired end. Amen. He is speaking to the people 2,500 years before they would ever return. And he's telling them what he is doing. And God will always bring confirmation. Absolutely. This is a confirmation of God's word to the nation of Israel yes. in this day. We have seen the deserts blossom. Yes. We have seen the nation of Israel become full bloom. Amen. What God had spoken in his words between verses number uh, 6 and verses number 14. We're seeing these things in this day and age come to pass. Amen. But understanding that you and I, we are grafted in. Hallelujah. We are spiritually, we are grafted in to the vine. Yes, yes. So understanding the promises of Abraham are our promises as well. Amen. But in verse number 16, he's just told Judah, Fear not, Amen. fear not, fear not. He's doing a great thing. Amen. He began it by the saying, thus saith the Lord. And brothers and sisters, today he's speaking to us by the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. who resides in us. And he's saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Verse 16, these are the things, and this is the title of this message. These are the things that you shall do. Hallelujah. Everyone's wanting to know, what are we to do in this day that we are living in? Oh, I need to do this. 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 Let me tell you what. We do what God says. Amen. It Amen. isn't what we think we need to do. Here's the scripture. These are the things that you should do. Speak every man and woman the truth Amen. with his neighbor. Speak wow. every man and woman the truth, the oh, truth yeah. with their neighbor. In Zechariah 8 and 16, when it says speak truth, emet, emet is the word. And it means faithfulness virility. This word carries the underlying sense of certainty and dependability. What is it that you and I are certain in? If it's anything other than the Lord, it is an idol. It is another God we have set up. The Lord is our hope of glory. Yes, he is. He is the author. He should be the author and, and the finisher and of our faith. faith. Amen. We are to share with our neighbor. We're to speak, remember, with an underlying sense of certainty and dependability. 
Yesterday I was speaking with some brothers and sisters, and it's amazing the opportunities that are arising Amen. for brothers and sisters of the Lord to speak to those outside of the body of Christ. Yes. And he's saying, speak with a dependency. Amen. Speak with a dependability. Speak with a certainty, God is declaring. We speak what we know. I know a God that heals. Amen. When the Lord, during praise and worship, he spoke to me. And you know, that turned out that that was for Kim. Really? It's her right ear. Her I right ear. Her right ear. Praise speak God. That healing yes, over we do. Your we declare ear. healing Kim. over Kim's in ear Jesus, right now in knowledge. the name of Thank Jesus. You, Amen. But the Lord spoke that to me, and see, I have a certainty about healing yes. because I know a God that heals. Absolutely. I know a God. He's healed me so many times. Amen. So when the Lord spoke to me, I knew a certainty that I had to speak that out. Amen. Now, we must understand, we speak with certainty and dependability. We speak the word frequently, apply. Frequently, it applied to God as a character of his nature. Amen. It is God's nature to speak with certainty. It is God's nature to speak with dependability. Yes. Yes. There used to be a day, and I can remember years ago, it, uh, back in the 70s, right after I had gotten out of college, I remember I needed a washer and a dryer. I had a little money saved up, and it was a lot of money back then, and I went to the Maytag dealership because the Maytag, were, the commercials of that time and the reality of that time was that Maytag, the repairmen were the loneliest men in town. It had dependability. And in the long run, my wife and I, our Maytag washer and dryer lasted us 31 years from the moment it was bought. So we, we must understand that God who lives in us, he wants us to be able to speak, him speak through us yeah. with certainty and dependability because his word is his will. Amen. Lord, I want to know the will of God. Here it is. Amen. This is the will of God. If God said it, yes. it's his desire. Amen. All God's promises are, are yes. yes, and we speak the amen. amen. We say, so be it. Amen. So what the Lord has spoken, we are to speak it to our neighbor with a dependability and a certainty, knowing that God is watching over his word to do what he said he will do. Amen. It's a description of the goodness of God. Amen. And, and you can find that in Psalm 24 and 5. You find it in Psalm 35 and 1, Jeremiah 10 and 10. When I was talking about having that understanding and the dependability and the characteristic of God and the certainty of it, that is what Abraham's servant walked in when he went to find Rebekah. Yes. He walked yes. in the certainty. He prayed to the God of my father, Abraham. I pray to his God, give me wisdom. Show me. Lord, he put out a fleece. Yes. He said, she will not only want to water me, she will want to water our camels. Our camels. Amen. And in so doing, God showed himself yes. and moved mightily. He's to be revered as the Savior of man, yes. mankind, men and women. Joshua 24, 14, Psalm 26, 3, Psalm 86 and 11, Psalm 91, 4, Isaiah 38 and 3. It's a characteristic that is to be found in those who come to the Lord. Amen. It's a characteristic that that is to be found, the truth, it found in those who come to the Lord. Let me give you these scriptures. 
Genesis 24, 27. Psalm 61, 7. Psalm 85, 10. Psalm 115, 1. Proverbs 14, 22. Proverbs 16, 6. Proverbs 20, 28. God's truth and God's mercy lead to God's peace. God's word, God's truth, his dependability, come on, his certainty, it leads to peace, Hallelujah. to God's shalom. Hallelujah. God's shalom. Nothing missing, missing nothing broken, restored the way God created it to be. Amen. So we must understand that God, he bestows peace and he bestows it even Amen. to those who have been sinful. Amen, All of us have sinned and come short of God's glory. Amen. He bestowed it to us to trust and rely on him. Jesus said, I am the way, yes. I am the truth, yes. and I am the life. Yes. No man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Wherever you may be in this world today, Jesus said, I've given to everyone a measure of faith. It's not our faith. Our faith can be torn down. Our faith can be washed away. Mm -hmm. But Jesus' faith that he gives us Amen. is a faith to Amen. trust God. It's a faith to rely on him. Yes. It's a faith to know that he'll never leave me. Hallelujah. He'll never forsake me. Never. He's our ever present help in our sure. time of need. Yes. Listen to me today. We don't know what tomorrow brings. We have today. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. Yes. Today is the day I can live and walk with the Lord. Yes. We're not guaranteed 20 minutes from now. God holds our lives. He holds the universe in the palm of his hand. Amen. The expanse from the end of his middle finger to the bottom of his palm. He holds the universe in the palm of his hand. Amen. So if he holds the universe in his hand, he holds you and me in the palm of his hands. He loves us and he wants us to trust him. He wants us to trust him. We must begin living in that trust as Gideon did, a man who, who had a fear of the enemy, a man who had a fear of that place that he was at and did not want to venture out from it. Mm -hmm. But God said, I know the plan I have for you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I am with you. I'm with you. But you must be born again. Amen. Amen. Jesus came to this earth, the only begotten Son of God. Amen. We're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. Now, whether Jesus was born in December or not, that's not what I'm talking about. We're celebrating the birth of the Savior of the world. He came to this earth and lived a life as, as you and I, as a human. He never sinned. He was fully man, but fully God. His ministry, he was a rabbi. Amen. His ministry began when he was 30. But he, his ministry came to a fulfillment when he was 33. Mm -hmm. He died on a cross. He died at a place called Golgotha. 
when he hung on that cross, it was a sign of execution. We, it's amazing, a place of death can also be a sign of hope. And he died on that cross for my sin. He died on that cross for your sin. Amen. He took the punishment that you and I deserved. He took it upon himself. Amen. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We don't deserve mercy, but at Cal Golgotha, he gave us mercy. He gave his life. Nobody killed him. Amen. Scripture says he breathed his last and gave up his spirit. They placed him in a tomb. It was a borrowed tomb. It wasn't even his own tomb. And on the third day, he fulfilled prophecy and he rose from the dead. Amen. And he walked this earth for 40 days. He walked this earth revealing himself. They say at the resurrection that the tombs of the righteous dead were opened and they came back to life That's right. and ministered in Jerusalem. That's right. Jesus ascended to heaven. And right now he sits at the right hand of God. This world's not out of control. This world is, God knows what's going on. Yes. And God's bringing about his desired conclusion of this age that we're living in. He says, I will come back. And I'll be with you for a thousand years on this earth. But you must be born again. Amen. Amen. So right now we're going to pray. Yes. You've heard the salvation of God. So right now let's pray together. Say with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know. I know. You're the Son of God. You're the Son of God. I believe. I believe. In my heart. In my heart. That you died for my sins. That you died for my sins. I ask you, Jesus. I ask you, Jesus. To forgive me. To forgive of me. Of my sins. Of my sins. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You took my punishment. You took my punishment upon yourself. Upon yourself. And right now. And right now. I receive. I receive your forgiveness. Your forgiveness. I know, Lord Jesus. I know, Lord Jesus. That you were buried. That you were buried. And on the third day. And on the third day. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead. So right now. Right now. I choose. I choose. I will walk. I will walk in newness of life. In newness of life. From this day forward. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed in that, Jesus name. you're born again. Amen. If you believe that he did that, Amen. you're saved. Amen. And if you may not have a Bible, but I want you to know we at Celebration, we're here for you. Yes. We're here to help you grow in the things of the Lord. You get involved in our discipleship program with Larry and Christina Floyd. Amen. Get involved. Foy, in, in right Foy. Get involved. Our Facebook page. Uh, our Facebook page. All of those with all the you'll teachings. Be so blessed. You'll be blessed. But if you need a Bible, let us know. Amen. Message us. Let us know you need a Bible. We'll get one to you Amen. if you'll provide us that information. Amen. Sweetie? We're going to take communion if you need to go. Uh, grab a cracker, piece of bread, get some juice, get some water, whatever you have. Yes. We want to take communion. And as we go into this time of taking communion today, I want to pray for uh, Cynthia gave a request for Nassar. Uh, Nassar, <coughs> I, I, don't, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, that he's congested and, and he's needing a touch. Okay. And then Jeannie Silver uh, uh, was shared that she's in the hospital okay. right now and that her uh, having trouble with her kidneys 
And we know that as we take communion, part of what we're remembering is the blood that was shed, the yes. stripes that were taken yes. for that healing. Amen. So specifically for those also, as we prayed earlier for Kim's ear, we're believing your ear is going to be it's healed, completely Kim. healed in the name yes. of Jesus. But Father God, we lift up these precious ones right now, to you, we Lord do. God. We as we go into this time throne, of communion. And we Father God, you, I'm asking you for your sweet healing, healing power to, to flow in their body. little bodies in the name we of Jesus pray, for this Jesus precious baby. Uh, God, working. the the congestion you, to be gone in Jesus' healed. name. Yes, Lord Strength Jesus. to be restored. Lord, and for Jeannie, for her kidneys, we're asking you to touch her, Lord God, to heal her. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Father, for what you're doing and the way you're healing Kim's ear, her right ear in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we take communion this morning, we remember it's our time to reflect, to remember what you've done for us. We are so grateful, Father, that you shed your blood for us, that you took our punishment yes. upon yourself for yes, us. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, and he said, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, right now, we thank you for your body, which was broken for us. Yes, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the salvation that comes through you. It is by your stripes that we are healed in spirit, soul, and body. And right now, we partake of this bread in remembrance of you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, you may eat of the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And in the same manner, <clears throat> he lifted up the cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant yes, in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for the power of your blood. We thank you that your blood and your sacrifice, it saves us. And Lord Jesus, as we partake of the cup, Thank you, God. we do this in remembrance of, in you. Remembrance of you. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as no, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing can wash away our sins but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing can make us whole again but you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Nothing but the blood. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we continue to thank you for healings that are sweeping through this body, through the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And Lord Jesus, we thank you. People are being made whole. Yes. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes. yes. We thank you. People are being baptized in your Holy Ghost, Lord. Hallelujah. People are being baptized with speaking in tongues, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. And Father God, yes. I thank you. They'll be able yes. to pray in the Spirit Holy and Ghost. in their understanding. Hallelujah. And they'll exalt you don't your have name. that gift and you desire yes. it. You ask the Lord for it this yes. morning. Say, Father, 
I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit with the yes. evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes, Lord. And go into mm. a time of worshiping Him. Amen. Just thanking the Lord. Thank Him for it. And allow Him to fill you. Yes. will open your mouth. You will be talking in English. But yes. if that's what you're wanting, then He will. He will fill you yes. and you will start speaking yes. in tongues. Yes, right now, wherever you're at. That's what your desire is. Lift them up. Lift up your hands and say with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus right, now, right now, I ask you I ask to you baptize me to baptize in the me Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of with, speaking in tongues. With the evidence of speaking in, in tongues. In name. Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and just let the Holy Ghost start speaking through you. Yes, yes, right now. Right now, we thank you, Lord. People are being baptized in your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You freely give to all who ask. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that, it Lord. It's a gift. Yes, it's a gift. It's a gift, and I know that yes. uh, years ago, now 30 years ago probably, 29. Uh, I saw a girl get baptized in the Holy Spirit, not one person touching her, mm -hmm. not one person laying hands on her. And that's why you say, you say, but now, Pastor Vanji, you're online. How on earth do you expect people to get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy the Spirit Holy Ghost is, got is the one that does it. <laughs> yeah. I literally saw her. She was standing right, right in front of me. And there wasn't a message. The pastor had not ministered a message on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but she desired it. She mm -hmm. just started worshiping the Lord, and next thing we knew, she just started speaking, speaking in, in tongues, tongues. Yeah. just started gushing. And from that, I, I already knew, because I had experienced it as a child, but it was beautiful just to see how the Lord did that in her. And that's why we say, yes, we will minister that even online. Amen. And we trust the Lord that if that is the desire of your heart, He's the he is the giver of yeah. the gift. He is the one that baptizes Amen. you. Amen. You don't have to have a hand laid that's on you right. for that gift to happen. That's right. Amen. When we're all gathered back together, absolutely we will. Amen. But in a setting like this, it does not limit the power That's right. of God. That's if right. That it doesn't limit the desire, power of God. It's a beautiful gift as we Amen. pray over our tithes and offerings. We're going to pray offerings. over our tithes and offerings right now. Thank you, Father, Father, we come before you right now and we lift up our tithes and yes, offerings God. to you. We thank you for your salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law of sin and death. Amen. Thank you for restoring us into right relationship. Amen. And we can now cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. We are children of the living God. Yes. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, not only have you saved us, yes. but we thank you that you've made us joint heirs with you in, in your, your inheritance. inheritance. Amen. And Lord Jesus, the nations belong to you. Yes, they do. Right now, the word of God declares that right now in Revelation 7, Father God, they're gathered around the throne of God, men, women, and children from every nation, tongue, tribe, and kindred. Amen. They're worshiping you in spirit. And they're worshiping you in truth. Amen. If that's what heaven looks and sounds like, that's what the kingdom of God, the church ought to look and sound like. Amen. And Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, you, we pray souls to your kingdom. Yes. Souls, 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 souls. They come Amen. from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Amen. And we thank you they come to the kingdom Hallelujah. with glad and sincere hearts. We're joined together, men, women, and children. And Father God, we come serving you, growing Hallelujah. in the things of your kingdom. Yes. We reach out to a world yes. that's lost and dying. Yes. And Father God, they have no hope, Hallelujah. but you are the hope of the world. Yes, and we will Father. share your love, your mercy, yes. your grace with a lost and a dying world so that they can come to know you. Thank We're you still Jesus. believing for a third great yes, awakening, Lord. Lord. Yes. We're still believing for that last day outpouring. Yes. And Father, we know that you began it on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. But Lord Jesus, we're believing for a fresh wave of it right Thank now, you, Lord, Lord. Across yes. America, around this world. Lord Thank Jesus, you, every force of dark darkness be driven, driven back, back in the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. Ooh, and we da, da, thank da, da, you, Lord. Lord, no, 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 that you're no, no, no. moving by the power of your spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for those in authority over us. Yes. We pray for President Donald Trump, yes, Vice President Michael yeah, Pence. Yeah, la, 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 we pray for those in the Congress.
office, the cabinet, the Senate, the Supreme Court. We pray for all those in state authority, Governor Cooper, all the other governors. We pray for all those in local authorities. We pray them and their households, born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. The word of God be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their paths. We call our nation back to a nation of righteousness. We declare we will walk a highway of holiness. We will base the laws of our land upon the word of God, the Judeo-Christian principles from which we were founded. We had celebration. We don't want to just hear the word. We want to act upon the word. We want to reap the harvest of your word. Right now we give. It's given good measure, pressed down, down, shaken together, running running over, over. and pour into our bosom so that we can can give again. We call us and our household saved. We call souls to the kingdom. We declare yokes be lifted, burdens be removed, people filled with the Holy Ghost. We pray abundance into every household. Lord, that scripture we opened with. Our God, my God shall supply all their needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And it's credited to their accounts. So they can make withdrawal Hallelujah. in Jesus' in name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, I feel led to pray for Norm again, yes. Lord God, right now. We pray now. for we strength do. of the Lord to the mighty Christ, man of God. We join around our and we lift up the Lord to you, Lord God. We are asking you for a touch in his body from the top of his head to the tips of his feet, Lord God. Quicken his mortal body. Yes, Give Lord. him your strength. Yes, in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Your healing power. To Hallelujah. In him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you for it, God. Yes, amen. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your beautiful word, Father, as we continue praying your word over our family, our, our beautiful celebration yes. family, Father, over our homes, over yes. our places of employment, right? Out of Psalm 91, when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. He is the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness Mm. are a shield, keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil be launched against you. Even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain Mm. unscathed, unharmed. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they have done. When we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always Mm. be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, Mm. trampling every one of them beneath your feet. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every Every time time you pray. And you will find and feel my presence. Ooh. Even in your time of pressure and trouble. Yes. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. 
you will be satisfied with a full Come life on. Hallelujah. and with all that I do for you. Yes. For you will enjoy the fullness of, of my, my salvation. salvation. Have Hallelujah. a super blessed day. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray Thank the Lord you, will Lord. bless you and Blessings keep you and the Lord will make his face precious. to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace both now and, and forever. Ever. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in Glory. the country. Everything you put Glory. your hands to is blessed. Yes. Your barns are blessed. Your fields are blessed. Your kneading, kneading boards, boards are blessed. blessed. You're blessed when you rise up. up. You're blessed when you lie down. down. You're the head. Down. You're not the tail. You're on top. You're not on the bottom. Oh, you are the redeemed of the Lord. Yes. And the redeemed of the Lord shouted amen, amen and amen amen I love those hands God Keep bless you we love you all love God bless you, you. have a, have super, a super supernatural day. day amen amen God bless you love y'all